Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today is tutorial number 54. Now in today's tutorial we're going to go back and finish off the targeting system that we were reworking. So let's open up Unity and Mono Development. And I'm now using Unity 3 since it's out of beta and it's available for everyone. I recommend everyone go get it. And you can get the latest version at unity3d.com. They'll have a link for it there. So when we left off last time, we enabled the ability to send the mob's health to the health bar to have it display. But the problem is, if you notice when you start it up, even before you target anything, it adjusts to mob's health. That even as you target through them, since they all have the same health, we should put some way in to test each mob's health individually. So let's head over to our mob class. Now if we look here, we're getting the primary attribute for constitution and we're just setting its base value to 100. Then we call the get values for the health and just call the update. I'm just going to comment that out. And I'm going to create two public variables so that we can adjust them in the inspector just for testing purposes. So I'm going to say a public int and we'll just say cur health and public int max health and we'll fix that now these are just for testing purposes so we won't be keeping them in but if we click on the mob we'll see that now it's available so I'm going to set this one at 50 out of 100 I'm going to go to the next one I'll give him 10 health out of 100 and for this next one let's give him 100 out of 100 and now let's head back into our script. And if we go down here to our messenger, I'm just going to quickly change these numerical values to these variables we set up. So we're sending it in the form of current health, maximum health. And I'm also going to want to move this message. I don't really want it in update. So I'm going to create a function, which will be public. It will not return anything. And I'll just call it display health. I'm going to move the message down here. So that way there when we want to actually display the health, we'll actually call this method right here instead of having it always being updated. And now if we just go over to our target mob class, where we're actually targeting the mob when we select it, we can just take this part here what we're doing is we're taking the selected target getting the component which is our mob class and we're calling the name and then after that we're going to get our mesh renderer and enable it that's the name above the mob well, right after that I'm just going to paste this in which is the select target dot get component and the component we're getting is the mob class but instead of calling for the name we're just going to call display health now this should allow us to, to have the health bar update based on the mob we have. So now when we start it, we notice it's at 100%. And it, I don't actually have anything targeted here. Let me click off of that. So as I go through, target the first one. I forget what his health was already. He's at 50%. The next one was 10%. And the last one was 100%. Now we'll notice that the health bar is adjusting to the going to the left and to be honest I'd kind of want it going to the right the health players health bar I want going to the left but I want the other one to go to the right so since we have a lot of time left in this video let's adjust that now so we'll head over to our vital bar script and right here is where we're calculating the, the size it was going to be and also where it was going to be displayed on the screen I'm going to come down here and create a new function I'm going to make it private it won't uh, actually let's return a rect and I'm just gonna call it uh, calculate position and it's not going to receive anything and then I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to comment this out for the people that have purchased the scripts so they can still follow along with the older older tutorials and I'm going to put a new one in here I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to tell it to calculate its pixel inset 
by this new function we just created. So I'll paste that in, the name. Now down here, we're going to want to check first off if it's a player mob or not. So if it isn't, is player, health bar, then we're going to do the calculations to make it move to the right instead of going to the left. And we'll want a return statement in there. So we can actually just copy this new rect here. And I'm just going to return it. And down here for when it's not, or for when it is the player bar, I'll just return that as well. Now let's just make sure everything's working. It should be the exact same, except now it's getting its rect from a function. Yep, everything's working the same. So let's go back in. And now we're going to want to calculate the x position and the y position. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to create an int. I'm going to call it y position. I'm just going to set it to zero for now because I also want to create an x position. And I'll set that to zero. Okay, then I'm going to calculate the y position. Now if we go into Unity and look, we have a height set for our, our health bar, which is 30. Now what I'm going to want to do is take whatever the height is, divide it by 2, and then move it down a certain amount of pixels from the top. So in my case, I want it to be 10 pixels from the top. So I'm, I'm going to take the height, which is going to be, the, well I can actually just copy it from here to make sure I don't get any typos. So the height divided by 2, subtract 10. And I'm going to take the Y position and I'll just paste it into the rec that gets returned if it's a mob. And if it isn't the mob, I also want it to be returned at the exact same height. So our bars are at the same height. Now this X one, I only want it to calculate a new X position if it's the mob because we want to keep moving it to the right of the screen as it gets smaller and smaller. So for this, we're just going to want to take the max bar length minus the current bar length, which is calculated up here before we call the function. And of course, it's based on a percentage of what the max bar length started at. And then I'm just going to subtract 60 from it. Now the 60 is the max bar length divided by 4 subtract 10. And we could actually just put that in there. Max bar length divided by 4 sorry it'd be plus 10. And if we take our x position and we'll tell it to use that save it off. Let's go back into Unity and I have an error and Unity 3 now tells me that I have one, you know, big bright white letters. So what's my error? Ah, had the little underscore there. I'll clear. I still have one more. Can't convert int to float. So it's trying to convert a float to an int. Let's just make these floats. It takes up the exact same amount of memory, so that's fine. Now let's start it up. And you'll notice as we tab along our mobs, the health bar stays starting at the right spot. Now you might notice that it jumps a bit at the start, and that's because we have the uh, health bars preset to this position. And when we actually start it up, it updates the position. That's a fairly simple fix. But what we're going to do is just hide the health bars until they're actually active. So we'll just go into our script. I'm going to create another function down here. It will be private. It doesn't return anything, so it's a void. And I'm just going to call it toggle display. 
Now it is going to receive a parameter, which is going to be a Boolean value. And I'll just call this value show. And what we're going to want to do is take the display, which is our texture, that's our GUI texture on the screen. And we're just going to want to toggle its enable. And we'll just set it to show. Now, since we only want the bar to show when we actually have a mob targeted, the best place to put the send message would probably be in the targeting script. So I'm going to come up here and where we have the selected target, you know, it checks to make sure we have one. If we don't, it returns. So right below here is where we'll want to put a send message. So I'm just going to copy one. Uh, we'll copy the one of the mobs. And we'll just type it right in here. Now it's not going to be sending two ints. It's just going to be sending a Boolean value. And it won't be mob health bar update. It'll be, oh, let's call it show mob vital bars. And we'll send it true. And then when we have it deselected and it equals null right down here, we'll want to send the exact same message except we're going to call it false. Now let's go over to our vital bar class and let's scroll up to the enable and disable. And for when it's a mob, we'll, we'll start with enable first. We're going to check and you know, if it's a player, you know, it receives this message. Else, if it's a mob, we want it to listen for another message, which is going to receive a Boolean value. It's going to be called show mob vital bar. Was it vital bar or vital bars? I think it was plural. Yes. And then the function we want to call, which is the one we just made toggle display and likewise we'll want to have a remove for that and we'll switch this over to a bool show mob vital bars and the same function. Now we're also going to want to come in here, be right here, and actually call the toggle display and send it false to start with. So there we go, it doesn't show up when you target something. There we go. Uh, a little later on we'll get into you know when you kill something and you don't have anything targeted, we want it to disappear again. But you notice it starts off in the right spot. There we go. Anyway, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll start creating well actually let's start creating our mob generation script before we get into animations and that. I'll see you then.